maybe the mother to have some rest in our house because mothers tend to jump in anyway and help out. But I think of all the kids coming together and the families coming together for their mothers. And I thought, as I put together this message, today is a day right behind Christmas and Resurrection Sunday of the most attendees that come to church. Now, the reasoning that we have more attendees coming to church because a mother's wish is that their children come to church. Therefore, in honor of the mothers, families show up. And as the service goes on, these pews will fill. And I thought, how simple, what a simple request from a mother who does so, so much for her family each and every day that her request is that her children, her family, spouse included, come to church with her. And I thought, why such a simple, simple request just to come to church? Why? I'll tell you why. Because a mother knows that Christ himself is the only answer. Amen. You see, this, this right here leads me to the text scripture. They know in whom they believe in. They know that he is able and they're persuaded that, they, that he himself will not only keep them through this life, the trials, the troubles, the tribulations, and the victories, but not only them, their family as well. Therefore, their request is that their children and their family come to church and receive what God has for them in their life. You see, a mother's heart is always thinking about their children. You want to see a mother get mad? Mess with her children. That ain't happening. This nice woman will turn mean. Amen? Because a mother cares for their heart, for their children in their heart. Therefore, today should be fulfilled every Sunday, not just on Mother's Day. I say honor your mothers each and every day, but especially by coming to church and spending time with the Lord, because only he is able. Amen. In Luke 18, 27, it says, and he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. This is something that a mother understands. You see, their heart, their mind is always on their family and their children, tending to their needs. But they also know that this world is filled with woes and worries, trials and troubles. And they know that Whatever's out of their control is in God's hands. They know that they're limited to their physical being, but they know who's in charge. They know that when there's a need, that they can go to God because with him doesn't matter the situation. All things are possible. The scripture says, if you can only believe that all things are possible. And a mother's faith believes God and believes every word that he says. If he says it, he'll do it. That's a godly mother, a Christian mother, and a mother that has faith to believe. They know in John 14 and 6, it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man come unto the Father but by me. That is why a mother's heart and desire is to bring her children and her family to find God. Because he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. You see, we only have a short period of time in this earth. The Bible says that life is as a vapor. It's fleeing. But if they can just get their family to find that same belief, that same faith in the one who is able, they know at the end of the day that their family is in good hands. The hands that that carried that child will be carried to the Lord because they found the way, the truth, and the life. This is a mother's faith. This is the desire of a mother for all her children. So this morning, as we honor mothers, let us read in Genesis 2, verses 18 to 24. If you would turn there this morning. Very familiar scriptures. Genesis 2, verses 18 to 24. It says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave the names to all the cattle and to all the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmeet for him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man... Leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. From the very beginning, God created a woman out of a man, the rib. She was created to complete the man. In other words, God created this man. He removes a rib and he creates the woman. A woman is the other half of a man. The scripture says that a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife for the building of a home. You see, there's a, a partnership there. That takes place. A help me. God created all these things. And he said it was not good for man to be alone. In other words. He needed somebody. A support system. And he created the woman out of the man. Now Adam named all the animals and everything. But God called her. Eve, God gave her her name. He said that she'd be the mother of all living things. In Genesis 3.20, we can read that. It says, and Adam called his wife, his name's Eve. I, I apologize. Adam called her Eve because she was the mother of all living. But, you know, the Lord inspired him to give the names to all the animals to his wife, led by the Holy Spirit, because she was blessed. She became a partnership as today. You'll see in family homes that a mother, a godly mother, inspires her family in faith, in relationship, and many hold families together. 
when my kids, as I said before, want to play and have fun and joke around, they come to dad. But when they're hurt, they're bruised, emotionally, physically, they need prayer. Many times they go to the mother. You see, the mother exemplifies God's love for his children. You see, where the men are, are more hard and, 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 and strong in some ways and weak in others, the mother picks up on that. Or we might not be as compassionate and loving, although we do love. The mother just has a different way, more tender, loving. That love we can find in Christ. They personify God's love and his mercy and his forgiveness. And I believe sometimes we may overlook those things and take advantage of them without even knowing these things. Sometimes there's a, a saying that says you don't know what you have until you don't have it no more. Many today mourn the loss of their mother. And I want to encourage you this day. You're here because of that love. And your mom, if she's not with us today, she's in a better place. She's where she needs to be in heaven. But those that have a mother should recognize the love and the compassion that the mother gives to her children and know that that love is only known through God's love. If we didn't have mothers, who would encourage us when we're down? Who would lift us up? Who would tend to our wounds? My friend, a mother is God's gift to mankind. That is his love, his mercy, his grace. All these things you can find in a godly mother. Their faith is beyond measures. Their prayers, their mercy. This right here is God's love in a mother. In a mother, we can see the fruits of the spirit. In Galatians 5, 22 to 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. When we read these things, we can see this displayed in mothers. This love that mothers have for their children You can't even explain it. Their joy, singing in the mornings as they cook, as they tend to their children. That's God's joy inside of them. The scripture says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Surely they find strength in the Lord to have the joy and the peace because the next one is long suffering, right? Sometimes, sometimes, some children are wayward. And the mother ponders all these things in their heart. But somehow God gives them, through the fruit of the Spirit, this peace, this love, and this joy for the endurance of long-suffering. The gentleness, a mother's touch to a wound, to a heart, maybe even the gentleness of a kind word to somebody. Fruits of the Spirit. Goodness, tending to others. And most importantly, most importantly, their faith. Meekness. 
temperance. Against such there is no law. All these are qualities of a faithful mother. But faith in Christ first. You see, you can't find the fruit of the Spirit in the world. These fruits come from Christ alone. And a godly mother with faith exemplifies these things. In honor of my grandma, I'd like to read this scripture. You see, my grandma was one of these ladies. Excuse me, I'll get choked up a little bit. Pray for me. She was faithful in all her ways. No matter the trials, no matter the troubles, just like mothers today that I see right here, and maybe even online, you know who you are. God knows who you are. He knows your faith. No matter what it was, she made sure, come rain or shine, that she was here in this church. She didn't have her, she never drove in her life. She'd catch the bus, she'd catch a ride, or she'd walk. But no matter what she had to do, she was right here Sunday morning. Faith. Psalms 1 is, is, exemplifies this. At her funeral, I asked the Lord to give me a scripture to read. And I looked in my Bible in the back. This is before I was a preacher. And Psalms 1 came out. And I read it. And I said, man, this is an amazing psalm. Many of you have read it. And we're going to read it this morning. But when I went back, it was no longer there. And I said, wait a minute. <laughs> My mind playing tricks on me. No, the Lord wanted this scripture to be read on behalf of my grandmother. And so I read all the other scriptures that were there. And I didn't, I, I didn't really like those because I, I liked them, but not like Psalms 1. So I remember coming up here, and I'm sharing this with you all because it's a testimony. I come up here, and, and the Lord had also gave me a, a poem to read about my grandmother. And I read the poem and got choked up. I forgot to read Psalms 1. So I tell my wife, and she can testify for it. I said, maybe I should go back up there and read Psalms 1. She said, no, you had your chance. Let somebody else go, you know. I said, but... The Lord gave me this psalm. I got to read it. I said, no, I'll just let the Lord do his thing. So, okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. So I remember sitting down and Pastor Fox, he comes up here. And the first psalm he read was Psalms 1. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read it. But I want you to know. That God knows all about your faith. He knows all about your worries and your trials. And he wants me to read this this morning. Blessed is the man. Now when he speaks to man, he's speaking to mankind. The woman and the man. Both. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit and his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. This psalm right here identifies the faithful mother, blessed, trusting God. Not getting involved in sin and in the world, but instead their focus, their primary focus is the word of God, their relationship with Christ, the prayers that they have for their family. And it says, blessed is that person. And whatsoever they do shall prosper. In other words, they know that their prayers are not going unanswered. 
They know that that relationship with Christ is not unrecognized. They know that their faith, their trust in God will come full circle. They know that they might not see it right now, but God is God. The same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. And when he says he'll do it, he'll do it. Amen. This is a mother's faith right here. Blessed. They're faithful. Putting God first in their life. They know who they believe in. They know and they're persuaded that he is able. This truly gives them the strength and the endurance that they need. I look at mothers and I say, wow, you really got your work cut out for you. You see, while we're asleep, they're still working. And when they're not working, their mind is working through prayers, through thoughts, through planning, and all these things. But I thought how Matthew 7, 24 speaks of a faithful mother where they built their foundation on. The foundation that they choose helps them in building the house that can manifest Christ in their family and in their lives. They're wise. It says in Matthew 7, 24, Therefore, who... Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. You see, a faithful mother don't just make decisions. They analyze things and make sure that what they're doing is beneficial not only for them but their families because they have them in their hearts and in their minds. Therefore, they're wise and they say that they built their house upon a rock. The rain descends, and the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Through trials, through troubles, through tribulations in this world that we will go through, that we will face. The scripture says in this world, we will have troubles. But no matter the troubles, they know that their house, their relationship, their prayers will not fall through the cracks because they have chose to build their household and their faith upon the rock of all ages, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. The scripture says, he that which was, which is, and is to come. He is faithful and he is able it says, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which buildeth upon his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. I could imagine how tired some at times mothers must get. This long suffering, this temperance. At times, these trials get pretty intense. And I believe it's the faith of a mother that keeps their children in line with God's word, their prayers. Brother Gary, he's not here with us, he's in heaven. But I'll never forget what he says. Thank God for praying mamas. Thank God. Amen. They have put their foot down against the enemy. The scripture says to resist the devil and he shall flee. A mother's prayers and faith is saying, devil, I'll resist you in the name of Jesus. You get away from my child. That is the faith of a mother. They stand their ground against the enemy. They hold their faith in Christ. They built their house upon the rock of ages. That is a mother's faith. In the late hours of the night, 
Let me go back. Mark 9, 23. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. They believe in God. In the late hours of the night, early in the morning, there's a mother praying for her children and her family. They're tending to the children at home, up at night while their children are sick, maybe in the emergency rooms. But the Bible says to never cease from praying. Be fervent in the spirit. And when I look at godly, faithful mothers, I find this quality to be true. Constant in prayer. Constantly lifting up their loved ones, friends, even strangers. And I say, imagine looking at this. I say, can you imagine how God is with us? See, that just exemplifies a little bit. I say, we get a sample of God's love for his people through mothers. But in the late hours, even the early mornings, you'll find mothers praying, tending to their families, cooking, preparing for the day, putting the children to bathe, to bed, singing hymns. A faithful, godly mother has the love of God inside of her. If you would turn to Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. We read in verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Now, I don't want to go on a tangent this morning, but I will say this. In the world we're living in, this love, this dedication, this commitment that exemplifies Christ is trying, the enemy is trying to steal that. This virtue that is way more above the price of rubies, the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy, and wants to destroy the gift that God has given to mankind. Many of you know what I'm talking about. There's a move in that direction, they're asking women not to be women. But they don't understand what they're asking. In a sense, it's denying the gift of God. I'll move on. The heart of a husband do safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like a merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planted a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with her strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth out not by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reached her forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh her, herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothings, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. 
Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excels, excel them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise, let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. These scriptures right here are everything we just talked about. A mother is constantly working, constantly thinking about the other's needs. And all these are attributes of Christ. All these things. She fears the Lord. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A mother fears the Lord. She thinks before she reacts. She considers her children, her family, and her friends before she makes a decision. You will not find an idle mother constantly working, constantly praying, constantly encouraging. And it says that she don't have to boast about it. You see, a faithful mother, these qualities come automatically. Thank God for godly mothers, for their faith. In Luke 11, 5 through 13, it says, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing before him. And from him, from within, shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with him, me in bed. I cannot arise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not arise and give him, because his, he is his friend, yet because his importunity, which means persistence, he will arise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, he will give him a stone? Or if, if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Faithful mothers and godly mothers are fervent and persistent in prayers. And they know that they can go to God for everything they need. Persistent in prayers. He says, because of this persistent, because they ask. You know, the Bible says you, you have not because you ask not. But when it comes to a faithful mother, you better believe that they're knocking on heaven's door for you and for me and saying, Lord, I got a need. Lord, protect my child. Lord, Cover us with your blood. Lord, I need your strength this day. And because of this faithfulness, this persistence, it says that God will answer. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. A faithful mother knows these things. And she goes and she asks God for everything that she needs. Most times, not for herself, but her family. That is a faithful and loving mother of Christ. 2 Timothy 1 through 12, 1 12, my text scripture once again. For the which I cause, I have suffered all these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Mothers know. Amen.
Thank God for godly mothers. Thank God for their prayers. Fathers, Ephesians 5.25 says this. Husbands, recognize that your wife is precious. Recognize that she is more virtuous than rubies. She's faithful to you and your children. So it says, husbands, husbands, remember, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Remember that she is your helpmate. She may even hold your family together, but her prayers and her faith are answered for you on your behalf to your needs. She puts herself second. Love your wives, cherish them, take care of them, pray for them. In 1 Peter 3, 7 through 9, it says, Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together, together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. A team effort there. Love your wives. Cherish them. Come together. Pray that your prayers not be hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise, blessing, knowing that you, that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Cherish your wife, and you shall be blessed. That's the word. Children. In Ephesians 6, 1 through 13, 1 through 3, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Your parents have enough stress. Honor your mother and your father in the Lord, it says, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be, be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. I was speaking to some, some children earlier today. And as I read this, I thought of that conversation we had. With age comes wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which the Bible talks about. Children must know that your parents have been there and done that. We spoke about how some question. God, why certain things take place. And as children, the understanding is limited because they lack the knowledge and the wisdom and the experience. But you can know, children, that your mother and your father are there for you. And of their godly, you will learn a lot of things. Have patience with them. They might not understand your generation. But they know that the one that doesn't change, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you can learn from them. And, and it says that you may live long on the earth. Their wisdom and their understanding will keep you safe. Their prayers don't go unanswered. They're praying for you. Trust your parents. Listen to them. Life is short. You see, I never imagined a day that I wouldn't have my parents. Never did. So I say, children, even adults, if you have a mother and a father, cherish them, learn from them, and pray for them. They're not perfect either. As we close this service this morning, I want to address the parents as well. In Proverbs 22 and 6, it says that we have a responsibility as parents. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. 
In other words, do your part as parents and bring them to church. You see, we cannot hold our children's hands the whole way through life. We can be there and support them. And like I said, thank God for a mother's prayers. But if you train up a child in the way he should go when he is old, those prayers will be answered. They say he'd come back. He won't depart from it. It'll be instilled in his heart and his mind that when they face a trial, and maybe you're not there for them at that time or in that situation, but God has heard your prayers. And because you did what he said, he's right there for them. The parents are their spiritual umbrella. And I think how at one point I saw my son's shoes and I said, those shoes, they're little, but they begin to get bigger. And eventually his shoes will be my shoes. We are their spiritual umbrella. Always remember that. They need to be nourished in the admi admonition of Christ. That wisdom that you have, you need to share that wisdom and that knowledge with them because they will face things in life if they haven't already. And they'll need to know that Christ is there for them. And they need to know that you're there for them as well. In Deuteronomy 6 and 7, it says, And these words which I have commanded you this day shall be in your heart, it says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. God has given in us his word, and it says that we have to give that word to our children. That way, when they're old, they won't depart from it. Mothers, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord. Continue to trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lead not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. No matter how hard life gets, always put your trust and your faith in Christ. Continue to lean on his understanding and not your own. And when you do that, he will direct your paths. I want to end with this scripture this morning in Numbers 6, 24 to 26. Mothers, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Happy Mother's Day, and God bless you this morning. We're going to take a